maybe somewhere, maybe not. But ask if he will be here, uh, just so I could see him. And like, what time is it? I'm sorry, I'm in the session. He's sort of replying slowly. On stage. <laughs> I can't find my mouse. There it is. All right. So, some years ago, I made the mail server, half a mail server, and I was, I've never actually told, barely told anyone about it because I like people just to sort of find the code, and also because you can't pronounce the name. <laughs> uh, so, I wanted something in QMail as in Tupidi, there was some feature I wanted, and I had to do it in C, and it was boring, so, like, now I'll just redo the whole thing in Perl, much better. Uh, we used it in Perl.org, at Perl.org since 2001. Uh, sometime after the first release, then, Lots of people were sending me patches, and it started to be not very nice curl code, so I made it modular. Uh, it's used at a patch at org too, for lots of mail. It's MIT licensed, which means you can take the code and it's yours pretty much. There are no restrictions at all, it's the best license. Uh, so the big feature is this, that it's pluggable. The only uh, the feature set in this, like the core QP, QPSMTP, is uh, very minimal, and we try to make it less and less rather than add features. Uh, and lots of people on the mailing list say, you know, I never did Perl before, but I wanted to try to use this, and in one afternoon I did something useful. Uh, and people who know Perl already can do it in minutes, you can get something working. So this was the very first plugin I made. Uh, this is a typical length, actually, for a plugin. So this plugin, it will, if you tell it to the mail server, then when you say quit, it will tell you a fortune cookie. Because that's not like, you know, <laughs> instead of just saying quit goodbye, then it says the weather is nice today, or whatever fortune cookies say. Uh, here's another plugin. This is actually useful. It will check at all mail you get has some basic headers. Uh, and it really is a little longer, but it will check that there's a date header, and there's some in the real one that it checks that the date is within some range, so it's within this week. Uh, so and it rejects a lot of spam that is just malformatted. Uh, here's another one that works really well. Uh, it will check this, this plugin. This now the plugin is much longer because it got more features, but the first version, and it worked, was this one. Where, what this plugin does is it says, whenever someone connects, then please call me. And then it will check for, I think for a second, <coughs> and try to see, can I read something? Because how it works is that the server has to say, say something first. But if the client says something first, which many spammers do, then we just say like, okay, bye bye, and turn them away. And it, a huge amount of spam just gets rejected by that before you even talk to them. Here's another plugin. This is not a real plugin, but it's also a demonstration of how simple it is. This would be a plugin to all the incoming mail put in a database. And I think, I didn't try it, but I think this would be all the code that you would need. Connect to the database and then just insert stuff. And you get a nice object with all the mail, with the headers and the body, and there are many different manipulations you can do on it. And so on. We have lots of plugins. So there's for gray listing, the thing with, you know, you have to talk to me twice before I will accept anything, and for spam assassin, of course, for and I think a bunch of other uh, antivirus things for DNS blacklist authentication. Even SSL, the TLS uh, stuff is implemented as a plugin because we don't do anything in the core. You want SSL, we have a plugin for that. There's a plugin that will use the Puff stuff to figure out which operating system you connect from Windows. We reject you or whatever we do. <laughs> <laughs> and many more. This was just a look in this sort of plugins directory, and there people have lots of plugins too that are not in the distribution. So it's super flexible, and there's even more, because this is just sort of what happens after you connect and how does it work. Uh, but how it really is that QPS MTPD now is just the stuff in the middle that sort of speaks SMTP and has the infrastructure for all this communication back and forth. Uh, and that's, and that, this was a big fire we had in our neighborhood some months ago. And this is a very small helicopter and big clouds of smoke. It was pretty scary, actually. Uh, so transports, ooh, transports. So the very first transport, the default one, when I made it first, was sort of like a CGI. Just you connect and it will start curl and start the whole thing, which was fine at the time. But then, of course, it got too slow, so someone made it a fork server. So there's one daemon running, but whenever someone connects, it will fork another process. And that was too slow, too. So someone made a pre-forking one, sort of like a patch, so it will fork some, some process in advance. Uh, we also have a module for ModPerl. I think that's what they use in the patch at all to run it, so they can run their mail server on their patch, which is sort of nice. And Matt Sargent made, using Danke Socket, made an async event-based version where you can connect thousands of times and you know, can handle it with one process where it will CPU. So you can find it here at smtp.devoluber.com. Or if you can remember the spelling, you can Google for it. 
So you can email me, ask if you would like to come, and I'll you know, send you links and advice. That sort of thing. Thank you.